Well, welcome back to Exploring Israel for Bible Study. I'm Jeff Baxter. I'm the Next Generation Pastor at Mission Hills Church in Littleton, Colorado. I'm so excited that you've tuned in to learn about these places and these people in the land of Israel where the Bible took place. It's going to be awesome. Today, I want to talk about a place called Caesarea Philippi. It's one of my favorites. Are you ready to go? Well, let's go to Caesarea Philippi. This comes at a really unique time in Jesus' ministry, and Matthew chapter 16 is where we pick up all the action. And I'm going to cruise through this very quickly today. Jesus has been doing ministry around the Sea of Galilee, and he heads way up north, 26 miles north, to Caesarea Philippi for a very important event at a, at a life-changing time in the life of Jesus and his ministry. He takes the disciples way out of the way, Eight to nine hours is how long it would have taken them to walk way north to Caesarea Philippi, where there are no Jewish settlements, where none of Jesus' ministry took place. There were no miracles. There were no feeding the, the, the large crowds. There were no fireworks shows and free food from Jesus in this location. It's at this location where crazy, extraordinarily evil practices were taking place. There was temple worship to Caesar, who is known as the Son of God, was his title. There's worship to this God named Pan happening in this space, and Pan was known where the word panic comes from. They thought that Pan, if they got on the good side of Pan, could cause chaos in everyone else's lives, but not their own. And there's also worship going on to Zeus and uh, other false gods with nature it, it's a beautiful location because the start of the Jordan River actually came out of a cave back at around the time of Jesus. It was displaced around 300 AD, a little bit later than that, from the cave to the front of the cave. But at the time of Jesus, there were temples set up around this space with niches carved out of the rock to worship Pan, Zeus, Caesar with unspeakable acts. Well, the god Pan, if you remember from your Greek mythology was this god who was kind of half goat with hooves on the bottom half and part human god on the top half with horns and uh, that's why there were a lot of goats in this area in Caesarea Philippi because they would use them in their temple uh, well practices and so it's crazy it's mayhem it's chaotic in this space that Jesus takes the disciples north 26 miles a marathon away to give them this well, his graduation speech, his, his speech before he would turn the corner and head towards Jerusalem to die on a cross for the forgiveness of sins and then rise on the third day, just like he said he would. It's at Caesarea Philippi where this event takes place. And it's extraordinary because this is where Jesus asks the disciples, who, who do the people say that I am? And the disciples respond, well, some say John the Baptist, and some say Elijah, and some say you know, another prophet. Some say this, some say that. And in Matthew chapter 16, you'll see that Peter stood up and said, but you are the Christ, the Son of God. You're the living God. Among the dead gods, you're the living God, Jesus. It's in this space in Caesarea Philippi that Peter is declares who Jesus is. And Jesus says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this is not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, now it gets really good. Now I tell you that on you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. And there's no doubt about it that Peter was the leader of the future church. And we know the rest of the story. The church launched and Peter was a critical leader in the church expanding in the kingdom of God going into the world. But there are layers here. In Hebrew thinking, there were several layers to this, and rock is a great metaphor for this. I mean, there are rocks everywhere in the Middle East, especially in Israel. And so Jesus chooses this, standing at what would be called the Rock of Gods, right there where the temple worship is happening, right there where everyone is, is doing unspeakable evil practices. In this space, right at the edge of, well, the cave was known as the, uh, the gateway to the underground world. That's what they believe. They called it the gateway of Hades. 
And so on the edge of hell, in enemy territory, Jesus says in Caesarea Philippi, who do the people say that I am? And Peter declares on behalf of the disciples, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God among these dead gods, these wannabe gods. At the rock of gods, he declares this. It's an extraordinary event. And then he says, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades or hell will not stop it from moving forward. And we know that that's true. The church has continued to go. People continue to come to know Jesus as their Savior. And it's in this space that in enemy territory that there's nothing going to stop the church from advancing right here, right now. Caesarea Philippi is an amazing place to see and look at and walk up to the cave and see the space and see the ruins of the temples where Jesus asked this question. And it's a critical question for all of us to answer. Who, who do you say that I am? And so Jesus really wants you to say he, that he's the Savior of the world. And he really wants you to give your life to him as your Savior and trusting him as your Savior. But he wanted to make sure with the disciples that they knew that they knew that they knew who Jesus was and he took them way out of their way to the edge of hell to pronounce that he was the savior of the world. It's extraordinary. It's awesome. I hope you get a chance to go to Caesarea Philippi someday. You would absolutely love it. Well, until next time, I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you soon.